and to go to that fair sign center on Saturdays and sometimes even Sundays. It felt like coming home, a welcoming place where all kids belonged. I knew all of the right places to go. The bridge with the rocks and the pipes, the planetarium with all the astronomy shows, as well as the tropical garden with all of the butterflies. I loved being the friendly Ontario Science Center staff with their bright coats and puzzles in their head, always ready to answer questions by kids. It was the only place I knew where asking questions was celebrated as much as knowing the right answers. These, there are Ontario Science Center memories in everybody's life. For me, it's the place where I met my first astronaut, the place where I met a Nobel Prize winner, the place where I realized it's okay to be scientists, engineers, and astronauts. It's where I learned it's okay for women and everyone to be passionate about science. I started creating my own science projects and presenting them in science fairs. Each year, my projects grew more and more complex as I learned new skills. I ended up winning the top award at the Candle Wine Science Fair 2022 and 2023. My project on detecting and deflecting asteroids. It gave me the chance to proudly represent Canada at an international stage, where I won second prize at the European Union Contest for Young Scientists in Belgium. A huge credit goes towards the Ontario Science Center for keeping my passion and curiosity in science alive. I find it completely unbelievable that our provincial government is permanently closing the Ontario Science Center and robbing children of their science, curiosity, and childhood dreams. Students make up 25% of the Ontario Science Center users, but the Ontario government never consulted us, our families, our teachers, or our school birds, even though it directly impacts us. The government was determined to destroy the Ontario Science Center, an intergenerational public asset, to justify destroying another intergenerational asset, Ontario Place. My heart goes out to the number of kids and families in Ontario. These kids need to experience the Ontario Science Center as I did. We need to open more science centers and invest and take care of current ones. As they turn these kids into future engineers, doctors, artists, astronauts, and even good policymakers. Instead, the provincial government chose to neglect and underfund the Ontario Science Center, and now it stands fenced off and permanently closed. The fight to save our public spaces and public goods is one worth fighting for. I cannot vote, but I have a voice. I'm writing letters to editors, meeting local, provincial, and federal policymakers, signing petitions, and using social media to organize classmates and science requirements in joining protests. I'm waiting to become a voting age so I can cast my vote against those who vote against science and the future. We can win and this fight and make the Ontario government reverse its misguided decision to and reinvest and reopen the Science Center. Ontario Science Center is ours to make discoveries, not to destroy. I urge everyone to keep protesting, keep organizing, and step out and vote during elections to support the future of young people in this province. Thank you. Anybody here, anybody here like that in the ninth grade? Do you like that in the ninth grade? What passion? What passion for science, learning, for the Ontario Science Center, for the right, the democratic right to vote the person you want to lead our government. What passion, my God. I gotta, we do something, we're just gonna break it up before I introduce the next one. Sir, why are you here today? I'm a science teacher. Uh, 
I, I love architecture and I respect the Thorncliffe Park and Flemington Park communities. This is how I up. I never met this. I didn't know who was going to say that. I couldn't look like. Okay, obviously I know why you're here. Andrew Hanson, I know you're here. Matt, why are you here? I've never trusted Doug Ford, and we know the deep bench of conservatives who hate Ontario and hate the working people and value money and developers over us. I want to fight this. Say Everybody disagree? Everybody, who agrees? No, no, not loud enough. Not loud enough there at all. Those missiles, I want to hear those missiles. How long is it? sitting drinking beer from the convenience store on his deck at the cottage of Muskoka. He thinks it's a thunderstorm coming. No! It's not a thunderstorm. It's the people of Ontario that are coming and said, Save our Ontario Science Center! So, next up! MPP, Adam Shamji, Don Valley East, and his colleagues from the Ontario Liberal Party will be speaking about their passion for keeping a full-size, properly funded Ontario Science Centre in Don Valley East, including all of Ont uh, all Ontarians. No, no, I got a I am very, very unhappy to be here. Doug Ford has tried to drive a stake through the heart of Thorncliffe and Plumbing Park, Don Valley East and all of Ontario. It's going to take a lot more than that. But we're unhappy that we have to be here in the first place. I am proud to be here with an amazing group of people like yourselves to fight for that Science Center. And two very special people I would like to highlight. Andrea Hazel, MPP for Scarborough Guildwood. And someone who's very special to us and very special to the Ontario Science Center, leader of the Ontario Liberal Party, Bonnie Cromwell. Thank you, everyone. My name's Bonnie Cromie, and I'm honored to be here with all of you today. You know, on Friday night when this decision was made, some friends of mine posted pictures of a wedding that they were attending at Ontario Place. There's another side of this. And when they left the building, it was locked up forever. Let me tell you that this is just another story of neglect. The way Doug Ford has neglected the people of Ontario, the way he has ne neglected our healthcare system, moving us all to private medicine and private clinics, rather than invest the system, rather than invest in our hospitals, rather than invest in our healthcare workers. Like the way he neglected our education system, and won't properly fund it, won't hire educators, won't have special education teachers in the classrooms, won't fund the backlog of repairs that are needed to the tune of $13 billion, and he has neglected the Science Center at the same time. However, we know better. We know what those engineering reports say, that if today we were in the middle of the worst snowstorm we'd ever faced, maybe there would be a little crack or two. Was that reason for him to close the Science Center today? Absolutely not. Every time a decision is taken, the first question I ask, who's benefiting? Who is benefiting from this decisions? And is it once again wealthy, Friends, wealthy insiders, lobbyists, the people who are funding this conservative government, who's benefiting? Just like the Green Belt deal, my friends. Who benefited? His developer friends. Who's benefiting from the 413 deal? It's the same, the developer friends. Who benefited from the closures of small family businesses, our Service Ontario franchises? Who benefited? Big box stores like Walmart and like Staples. Now we're driving business into big wall, big box stores for goodness sakes. And just a week or and and of course we'll talk about Ontario Place in a minute. Two weeks ago, we came forward and we said there's another scandal brewing. It's a billion dollar booze boondoggle. Why? Because in one year, we were all going to enjoy a little more access to beer, wine, and spirits at corner stores. But for just a billion dollars of your money, 
your money. They expedited those sales so that you can go at a premium, by the way, because you're still going to buy it from the LCBO at a premium, get access. Think about what that billion dollars could have done to our healthcare system, to our education system, to make the repairs at the Science Center, right? My God. And for what reason? We also know that the reason he's doing this is to justify the $600 million parking lot that Therma Spa, another foreign company, which will be building on public land, our land, at Ontario Place. I don't know, sir, are we gonna go have a hot tub together at $40 for entrance in, a, in an Austrian spa? Come on, this is outrageous, and all of us need to come together to stop it. With the power of the people, we made them reverse the Greenbelt decision, right? And now to Adel Shamji and Andrea Hazel. Dr. Shamji represents the area and I think he has a few things to say. Sorry to take so long. Thank you so much, Mike. Listen, in my writing alone, we have submitted petitions with well over 35,000 signatures. We have had people not just from Don Valley East, not just from across Ontario or Canada, from around the world saying that they want the Ontario Science Centre to stay exactly where it is. But let me tell you something. Those people are not the only people who said that the Ontario Science Centre should, should remain. In 1969, at the opening of the Ontario Science Centre, then Conservative Premier John Robart said, and I quote, I am confident that over the next 100 years, the Science Centre will have an impact on far more people than any other single centennial project. And it wasn't just the Conservative Premier who opened the Science Centre. Raymond Moriyama was even more ambitious. He said it will last over 250 years. But under Doug Ford, it couldn't even last 60. Wow. You know, I'm not actually supposed to be here today. I'm supposed to be in Bracebridge because under Doug Ford, their hospital beds are closing. Before that, before Bracebridge, it was Durham. Before that, it was Minden. It's the Ontario Science Centre is a symbol for what's happening in Ontario. The Ontario Science Centre is our health care. It's our education. It's our infrastructure, which under this Premier is being allowed to crumble and fall apart. Now let me tell you something. Doug Ford has actually been shockingly transparent. Earlier this year he passed legislation called Bill 151. With Bill 151, the Ontario government, the Ministry of Infrastructure, took control of public institutions away from public boards. It took control away from the Ontario Science Centre. Look what happened. It takes control away from Science North, from the Royal Ontario Museum, from the, McMi from the McMi from McMichael Canadian Art Collection. These are all institutions that are next on Doug Ford's target list. So today, this week, he published a report saying that the Science Centre roof is in a critical state. Less than 1% of panels need repairs, critical repairs. But I'll tell you this. I'll tell you what's in a critical state. It's not the Ontario Science Centre. It's Doug Ford. I'll tell you what's at the end of its life. It's not the Science Centre. It's Doug Ford. So today we're here to say the Science Center stays right where it is. We're here to say bring it on because there's a pox in our province and that pox is called Doug Ford. Andrew Hazel. through that next election. 
Do you believe in the power of the people? I believe in the power of the people. You are the people. You have the power. You gotta stand up. My people, you gotta stand up. You gotta bring your family members. You gotta bring your cousin. You gotta bring even your pets in your house. Because we gotta take Ontario back. We're losing Ontario. Every, every area of Ontario that makes it work is falling apart. I've seen it. I have heard it. I travel with the government on their economic and financial community committee and every organization from every organizations that represented healthcare, every organization that represents our public school system is falling apart. I want to rep the people from Scarborough. I am here repping the low-income families. I am here repping the schools from Scarborough that uses the Ontario Science Center to teach their kids about technology and science. You know we need our next generation to come up and take part into technology and science. We don't want to have to be dependent on too many people that is coming in to do that. Look at our generation. Please take a look at them. I am here fighting for this generation. And I know you are here fighting for this generation. So I'm going to end on this. Thank you. Andrew and Hazel delivers a line like nobody else. The people in Scarborough and the people of Ontario are very fortunate to have Andrea Hazel voicing her opinion, her outlook and opinion, because I know Andrea and she is has an opinion. Um, I was asked, they weren't on, they're not on the agenda, but uh, the gentleman behind me oh, over there uh, with Green Party, uh, uh, his name is Chris Collins, and he's running in this. Uh, Chris will just say hello. And uh, we'll be working up because we need to be fair to everybody that opposes Doug Ford. So. Hello, everyone. My name's Christian Cullis. I'm here today as a candidate, but I'm also here today as someone who loves the Science Center. I am here, and we are all here because we remember the long hallway with the history of the Earth. Because we remember learning about biology and physics and chemistry. Because we are curious. Because we have wonder about the world around us. And because we see through the transparent corruption of Doug Ford's administration. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kristen. I appreciate that. There's other, you know, just to be fair, there's other people running this way. But we've heard from the uh, three uh, three opposition parties, and we, we, we do have uh, a time limit here today. So we're going to move on. I apologize. Uh, you might not like it, but we do have to move on. Thank you. So, they're pretty powerful, isn't it? What a powerful group of people here. You know, next one, one of the things, and I need to take a deep breath, is that, Well, oh, thank you. That was powerful as well. So as we as we move on, I just want to remind everybody that Ray Moriyama, Japanese Canadian, uh, his first major uh, commission was the Ontario Science Center. And what I said in, in, at other times is that uh, uh, that most people see the Ontario Science Center from most people see the Ontario Science Center from the Don Mills Road side. Been a long time park and ravine advocate, which I do most, <laughs> the majority of the time, is I see it from the ravine side. And it's totally different experience. It's totally different experience. Ray Memoriam's brilliance was to bring the built form of brutalist architecture and the natural form of the beautiful West Don Valley together by leaving the mature trees, by leaving the creek that runs through it. And the brilliance of design to put a bridge from one building to another, so you can 
Way to go from where I am as well. So, thank you. You just kind of cut me off and I'm going to move on. Oh, speaking for the National Association of Japanese Canadians is Mary Galloway. Mary. Thank you everyone for being here. I'm a member of the National Association of Japanese Canadians. Um, and I want to take just a couple of minutes to talk about the larger context of the Ontario Science Centre. The Science Centre was designed by legendary Japanese Canadian architect Raymond Moriyama. It is not the only one of Mr. Moriyama's works which are currently under threat in this city. While the focus here is on the Science Centre, there is a connecting theme. The fight to save the Science Centre is the same fight to save Ontario Place, and it's the same fight to save the original Japanese Canadian Cultural Centre. It's about protecting public architecture, spaces, and cultural institutions. The original Japanese Canadian Cultural Centre is just up the road from the Science Centre. It was one of the first buildings that Mr. Moriyama ever built. As a child, Moriyama was interned during the war. After the war, as more and more Japanese Canadians moved to Toronto, Moriyama helped to convince the Japanese Canadian community to come together and build this building. It's a beautiful building, and 75 Japanese Canadian families, less than 20 years after the war, came together and put second mortgages on their home to finance the building of that building. That building has now been sold to developers who are threatening to demolish and alter almost all of the building in a neighborhood that desperately needs community space. There is another way for that building. It could be preserved and used as a community center. Looking to Ontario Place, the Japanese Canadian community gifted a temple bell to the province in 1977 as a gift of reconciliation. That temple bell was also an award-winning Moriyama design. It has now been dismembered to make way for the Thermos Spa. with the province about the Temple Bell, cliches about the inevitability of change were offered. The Temple Bell stood for 46 years, less than half of the 95-year lease awarded to the Thermos Spa. Our public buildings are being left to neglect, and we are sacrificing these cultural institutions for short-term goals. We are grateful to everyone who's here to support the Ontario Science Centre and who has been vocal about the brilliance of Moriyama's architecture of inclusion. I ask the province and the City of Toronto to think deeply about this larger context of the Ontario Science Centre. Do not let Moriyama's legacy end in erasure. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Yes, you know what, the word that, word that came out that I heard was Rainier Moore's design of inclusion. And the other one that comes to mind is learning is fun. Learning is fun. The Science Center. Alicia, is the Science Center fun? Arushi, is the Science Center fun? How about you? Is the Science Center fun? Ask, ask me for You know what? We need someone else to say something. The media. Quick. I want to say that they are. The moving of Ontario Science Centre and the redevelopment of Ontario Place it is selfish and it's elitist. The government should listen to the people. Uh, wow, the government should listen to the people. What? A, holy cow! What a concept for democracy. What a concept for democracy. And he mentioned Ontario Place. We have. We'll have. A, Last, unfortunately, uh, Norby Pasquale and Kristen Wong Tam and MPP Chris Glover speaking for Ontario Place. Well, we're going to move on now. Oh, all 
Uh, so, you know what gets forgotten a lot of times? There's 400 employees of the Ontario Science Center. 400 employees, 400 families. 400 families that earn an income and, you, and spend that income in the community and help our economy as well. Some of those employees live in Fleming and guess what, they can walk. They can walk. Some live a little further, they can take transit. Now we're talking green. Now we're talking green. So uh, to re representing uh, the workers at, uh, at, uh, at Ontario Science Center is Martin Fisher and uh, Colleen Holder. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for coming out today. Um, I represent the people who work at the Ontario Science Center, the ones in the lab coats, the ones that make your food, the ones that clean at night so that the science center is clean again the next day. Um, our hearts are broken. Uh, it's, it still hasn't fully sunken in, but it is so extremely sad to have been at the Science Center on Friday, walking around, seeing the fun all over the place, seeing the smiles on the kids' faces, and knowing this could be the last day that that is happening. Um, I am immigrant to Canada. Um, I came here 25 years ago. And the only place I wanted to work as, at is the Ontario Science Center. I come from Switzerland. In my hometown, there's buildings that are 800 years old. And they're not built and then just left to be, they constantly were maintained. So I'm a science educator, I work with the kids, many of you have probably been in one of my classes, and one of the things we do is imagine things. So everyone, I'd like you to close your eyes and imagine that we are in the future, 200 years from now. And that you come to Ontario, maybe you don't live in Ontario anymore, you come to Toronto, and you go to the Ontario Science Center and you know this is the place where science centers started in the world. There are now 3,000 of them. When it started, the idea was considered stupid. How would everyday people know what to do with science? And that's crazy. There needs to be experts who tell you what to do. But Raymond Moriyama had the idea that this could be turned around, that we can all participate in our experience. That you can come and decide for yourself what you're going to do there. You can be yourself. Your inner child has a right to come out and live and be. And we witness that every day. So here's the crazy thing. Tomorrow, Monday, I'm going back to work at the Ontario Science Center. It is totally safe. There is no roof that is going to collapse. But no visitors are allowed in. There is a fence around it, like it is some crazy dangerous place. Now, I just want to end, but there's one last thing. Evan here in the red lab coat, come up to the front. So I don't know if you know that, there is actually a school at the Ontario Science Center. It's called the Ontario Science Center Science School. Um, Evan's dad was at that school in semester 18. We are now at semester 84. For 42 years, 30 students have come and gone to school at the Science Center. Imagine 2,400 people who have gone to school at the Science Center and are all over the world having an influence on what's happening. So Evan here, you have not been at the Science School but you're wearing the lab coat. Right? And so what we're all hoping is that we can turn this around and allow the Science Center to continue. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that perspective. My name is Colleen Holder and I'm the Regional Vice President for Option Seth Co. And I'm here to bring a message from my president, J.P. Hornick and also to stand in support of my 400 members that are under my umbrella at the Science 
center, I say at, it's very hard to imagine that, that they won't be here anymore. Not to mention, I too used the Science Center when I was a child. Came to the Science Center and thought it was the best place ever. I heard a story from one of the, my members. It was someone from the community. Flemington Park raised her kids right across the street from the Science Center, took them to the Science Center every single day. Fast forward, one is now a physicist. And the other is now a scientist. I became none of those, but that's okay. I still went to the Science Center. I don't know what happened to me, but I have to say that it's so disappointing to watch from 2018, Ford, once he got elected, he cut every budget that made any sense whatsoever. Autism file, legal aid file, health care, education. But hey, good thing he's been working for the workers, right? Who believes that? Do we look stupid? I came to the Science Center with my members in April 2023 to tell the Ford government the reasons why it's a very bad idea to move the Science Center, to move that large operation to a smaller space at Ontario Place. So hard for me to say Ontario Place now. I used to love that place too. Because now I can't go to the spa anyway, so why? Why would I go there? To use the $400 million parking lot? That's a good idea. Everything that we've seen Doug Ford do since he's been in office is try to decimate our public service one brick at a time. The Ontario court system, he closed down five community courthouses to bring everybody into a building downtown Toronto. They can't afford to get there. They can't afford to park there. They have their homes and they, are, they have their communities built around the port where they work in their communities. Courthouses are empty. And it's unbelievable, every day you wake up, there's something new, some new boondoggle by the Doug Ford government. How do we even keep up? Can we keep up? Because I'm finding it hard to keep up. Every single day, it's something new. Very hard to keep up. But he continues to privatize these, you know, PP partnerships, privatize all of our services so that they can turn around and say, oh, see? People are not coming into work. That's why we need to privatize. No, it's not. If we don't keep these jobs for our members, where will we be? Where will our kids be? I love what the Lorax said. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, and nothing is going to get better. Nothing. It's not. And up and say enough is enough. Doug Ford, do better. Do better for the people that voted for you. While he's there, do better because you know what? This is what's going to happen. Because you're going to get out there and vote him out of office. He needs to go. Keep saying reverse your decision. We've seen him reverse so many decisions. He needs to reverse this decision as well. Thank you so much. Did I keep my two minutes? Yeah, is that too much? Of course it was. Of course it was. I just want to point out that there's a federal by-election here in, in Toronto, St. Paul, tomorrow, and the uh, the candidates are here. Please take a moment to stop by and, and then raise your hand if you're a candidate or working for a candidate. And, and you know what? See their viewpoint. Because, you know what? Uh, Ontario needs a different viewpoint than the one that's led by uh, the Ford government. So please reach out, out to them as well. And vote. The other thing is, we keep mentioning that, uh, I know Adel mentioned that there was a petition. He put down on his desk 
in the Ontario Legislature petitioned with 35,000 names. Uh, Save Ontario Science Center letter campaign, when I looked on the way here this morning, it had gone over 30,000. By the way, it was 21,000 Friday morning. That means people are, <clears throat> people are pissed. Are you pissed? Yeah! Well, it doesn't sound like that. Are you pissed? Yeah! Are you pissed? Yeah! Okay, that's, that's better. Uh, I want to introduce Elsa Lamb. Elsa Lamb is an uh, architectural journalist um, and has been right at the forefront of looking at uh, trying to disseminate the BS from uh, first the business case, the bogus business case that the Ford government presented, and then the uh, new re uh, engineer's report that came out and said, wait a second, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Here we are with dark clouds, and the sky ain't effing falling. So, Elsa Lamb, please. Thank you so much. So, I want to just be clear, I think we all know here and people have said before at me, this is a manufactured emergency. There's no reason that the Ontario Science Centre needed to be suddenly closed on a Friday afternoon in the summer as the school year was ending. And the way that this, the, I've, I've actually read the whole report, and there is nothing in the report that says that the, day, that the roof is going to collapse imminently and that the whole place needs to be shut down. There is, and the way that this was done, the way that this has gone down, shows such complete disregard for the visitors of the Science Center, the many families and kids that I see here, and the community that relies on this place, not only as a kind of special occasion museum, but as a real educational and cultural hub in their neighborhood. It, uh, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit emotional because I've heard from so many parents just in my group that are like that are heartbroken because they just didn't have a chance to say goodbye to this place that was so formative in their childhood and in their kids' childhoods. Even if you look at the the kind of financial aspect, you know, this makes no sense. We all know that getting interim spaces to get summer camps going or possibly to throw some of the exhibitions for a couple of years, those things aren't cheap. Why not use that money to actually just make the roof repairs? Why not just you have used that money to repair the bridge? Yeah, why not? You know, there's 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 three kind of things I see happening right now where I know that a lot of people here are eager to do more than just show up at a rally and sign a petition. Uh, but I think that there's three efforts that are happening right now that may explain why the Ford government was so quick to, to shut down and so eager to shut down the, the Science Center in this way. What is this growing effort? of people being aware of what's happening and what the, the government is actually proposing of moving the Science Center to a facility half the size and not nearly of the architectural value of what we have currently instead of just fixing up what we have. The second one, and we all know that Ontario Place and Ontario Science Center, so please continue supporting this effort. Sign up for their mailing list, Circulate the petition, especially for those people you know that have contacts outside of the GTA. Those, those names are especially valuable. The second thing I have see happening is the Architectural Conservatory, uh, Conservancy of Ontario is getting very close to getting this place heritage designated. <laughs> Ontario Place Protectors, who's fighting against Bill 154, another bill, I wasn't aware of 155, yeah. and this is the bill that says that the Ontario government can do whatever it wants at Ontario Place, and that it's not responsible to any municipal laws or not any normal planning processes, and that it's also it's exempt from any civil or criminal liability for its actions at Ontario Place which means that if it's uncovered later that there is dirty dealing happening in Ontario Place, which many of us maybe suspect or fear, 
then they can't be held accountable for that under the bill that they, they, they have currently passed. So there's a legal challenge to that. So please support all of these three things. Support Save Ontario Place, support ACO and their work to get this place heritage designated, and please support Ontario Place Protectors as well. Thanks so much. Thanks, Ursula. That was great. Uh, I was asked to remind people how you get involved. Uh, every poster here has a, has a QR code, but if you're not a QR code person like, uh, like me, uh, save on savesciencecenter.com, sign the petition, sign the letter to the Premier, please. And encourage, if you have family outside, outside of Toronto, encourage them because, like, for instance, oh, it's only Toronto's Toronto elites. I'm not a freaking Toronto elite. And you know what? I'm looking around. Well, he might be, but I don't think anybody else is. So, um, you know, we didn't make enough noise for a while. So I want to hear some noise. Somebody be loud. Who's loud? If you don't make it louder, I'll get Andrea Hazel back up here. So, you know what? Uh, Doug Ford is tied uh, the, relocating the Ontario Science Centre to his uh, ill-advised plan to uh, support a foreign-owned mega spa to the tune of probably a billion dollars. Uh, the three people, the three people standing next, to, four people standing next to me, have been involved since the very beginning. Like, you too, yeah, sorry. I've been involved since the beginning, and so a lot of other people that support Ontario Place for All. So, uh, Norm P. Pasquale, co-chair, MPP, Chris Montan, Arushi, Chris Glover, Catherine Leno. Please, give them a big round. Because the fate of one is more than likely going to be the fate of both. And relocate, closing and relocating the Ontario Science Centre is a smokescreen to support foreign-owned Therm Mega Spa. Foreign-owned Therm Mega Spa. Well, you know what? I'm 70 years old. I'd like to see some of that billion dollars go to long-term care, to health care, to education, to fight climate change. There are so many other things to spend our, our hard-earned tax dollars on than to give it away to support foreign-owned, their mega spa, to take care of those elite that are not here today. Hi. Thank you, Floyd. Um, thank you, Floyd, and I want to thank Save Ontario Science Center for getting 30,000 signatures on a petition, like 8,000 in the past few days. You all need to talk to your friends and family all across this province. Doug Ford needs to hear from 25,000 people in the next three days if this thing is going to reverse. So, talk to your friends and family. We're here because the Science Center was shut down on Friday with no notice, leaving millions of families in the lurch through the, summer t through the summertime. How, look, I was a school board trustee, and I know how many camps are available in the summer, one week before the summer starts. Can anybody take a guess? Zero! So, the same weekend they fenced up the Science Center, they started bashing down buildings on West, West Island in Ontario Place. Shame. What, what construction company does construction exclusively on the weekend? This is a government with something to hide. No one does construction on the weekend. At Ontario Place, the Ontario government used a minister zoning order in Bill 154 to strip all rights and protections from Ontario Place. And this could happen to the Science Centre, the AGO, the ROM, the McMichael Gallery. If we don't stand here, we don't stand for the rest of Ontario's institutions and identity. We gotta stand up! We are two minutes to the midnight on the doomsday clock for Ontario Place and Ontario Science Centre. If we want to save these places, we got to get loud. The target PC and PPs especially, make them feel vulnerable. Let's start right now. Who shut down the Science Centre? Doug Ford! Whose ear should we scream in until it reopens? Doug Ford! Will we accept some temporary thrown together Science Centre? No! no. Science Center, no. Doug Ford! Thank you very much, everyone. 
And I want to introduce you to uh, the MPP of Spadina for York, who has fought with us every single day to save Ontario Place and save our Science Centre. We couldn't ask for a better partner at Queen's Park, Chris Glover. So I'm Chris Glover, I'm the member of Provincial Parliament for Spadina for York, which includes the Science Centre. And how many of you want to live in a province that values science education? I see unanimous. I see it's unanimous. We know the value of, of science education, and we've got two people here. This is Catherine Little. She and her husband met when they were science educators as part of the science school at the Ontario, at the Ontario Science Centre in 1988. She is now a science teacher, and her husband couldn't be here because he's a doctor. This is the value of science education and the value of the Science Center. This is a Rushi you heard from her earlier. The gold medal she's wearing around her, her neck, this is for the Canada Science Award. She won the gold medal at the Canadian Science Competition. Let's give her a round of applause. And she has been going to, her father started taking her to the Science Center when she was just a toddler. This is the value of science education. But Doug Ford doesn't value science education. He doesn't value our public spaces. He wants to give them away to private, for-profit corporations and then give them a big taxpayer-funded check as well. At Ontario Place, it's around a billion dollars. They're gonna spend a... They're gonna destroy the West Island. They're gonna destroy Ontario Place and hand it over for 95 years to Therma along with a billion dollar subsidy. It's absolutely shameful. And now, in the middle of the night, last night, Friday afternoon, they announced they're gonna close the Science Center because it needs $40 million worth of roof repairs. That's a lot less than the $400 million that it's gonna to cost to build a half-size Science Center at Ontario Place. So we are gonna stand up, we're gonna fight for the Science Center, we're gonna fight for Ontario Place. And as you've heard, this is not just a fight for these two institutions. It's for every cultural institution in this province that belongs to us, the people of Ontario, because with Bill 151, this government's taken control of the McMichael, McMichael Gallery, they've taken control of the ROM, and they've already destroyed, or they're destroying, the Japanese Cultural Centre and the Japanese Temple Bell. We've got to stand up, we've got to stop Ford's path of destruction, we've got to save the Ontario place, and we've got to save the Science Centre. Let's hear it. Save we Thank you, and you can all do your part. There's petitions over here at the orange tent. Please come over, sign the petitions, and the I will tell you, and grab a button, and the other thing is when the Science Centre, on the location that it is on now. Thank you, Chris Glover. Thank you, Norm DePascali. Hello, everyone. My name is Kristen Wong-Tam, the yeah. member for Provincial Parliament for Toronto Centre. This is a remarkable turnout. There are so many reasons that Doug Ford has brought us together. Not only are we seeing the decline in healthcare, the decline in public education, decline in long-term care facility, but he is attacking families and children right across Ontario. My son, my beloved son, was born just a few months before the global pandemic. And I knew that when the sunnier skies would open up for us again, and the economy would open up, and the theaters would open up, I would be taking him to visit our treasured assets. The theaters, the science center, the gallery. And I've had one opportunity to take my son there because we have seen roving close downs. But I was looking forward to a future where I could bring my son to the Science Center much more than I have. And I'll tell you that it's been heartbreaking for me to think about the, the education that has been stolen from him, the experiences that have been stolen from him by Doug Ford. And then I think, then I think about the children more children and families, especially those in the Thorncliffe community, who are largely racialized and low income, and what the closure of the Ontario Science Centre is going to do to them. This is the travesty. And Doug Ford has built the crisis, manufactured the crisis, on a web of lies. He has never been truthful with Ontarians. So not only is he lying to get his way to closing the Science Centre and through demolition by neglect, 
But it is also important for us to note that the neglect didn't start with Doug Ford. It has been happening with previous governments, liberals and conservatives, where they have not been investing in our assets, our cultural assets, our scientific assets, and we need to make sure that the next government does exactly that. It is non-negotiable the experience and the education, the opportunities for our children. And I'm willing to fight like hell, fight like hell, to make sure that we keep the Ontario Science Centre open, and we are, and mark my words, we will reopen it. My son, your children, your grandchildren, your nieces and nephews, we are going to reopen the Science Centre for them. We are going to return Ontario Place to them. This. I've known Doug for a long time. I sat with him at city council. I know what this guy's all about. He has a dream, and a dream that I will remind you of what that dream is. He has always wanted to open down, open a downtown waterfront casino. Mark my words, mark my words. We will never see the Ontario Science Center reopen at Ontario Place. It will not happen. We will not see a Therma Spa being built, that will not happen. We are going to see a sleight of hand. The shells on the table are going to be switched, and before you know it, we'll be told that a casino is coming to downtown Toronto. That is what Doug Ford wants. I'll tell you what we're going to do about it. If Mart Stiles becomes the leader of the, of, if becomes the premier, of the, of the province of Ontario, under the premiership of Mars Stiles and the NDP government, mark my words, the Ontario Science Centre will be reopened. Ontario Place will be given back to the community and there will not be a waterfront downtown casino. No way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Powerful words. Powerful words from my brother here from a different families, but you know, and God bless me with a full head of hair. Anyway, uh, as I said earlier, uh, the Ford government has intertwined to what should be separate issues, two separate issues. I don't want to see a science education, uh, you know, I, I wonder what the odds are in this slot machine. That's not a science education, that's not a math education. We want STEM education, where people move on to positive careers. We want people that, that go into skilled trades, and that doesn't, that doesn't work if you're sitting in a casino. But one of the things we wanted to do today is to interact and ask people in the crowd, not just politicians and involved people and scientists and people from Etobicoke and people from all over the province to come out. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. The Science Center not only affects children in Toronto, there is no school within the city of Toronto, whatever their background, whether it's public or private or whatever, no school can create a science program like the Science Center. And, and children across the province come to the Science Center on a class trip because the little communities where their schools are, don't have anywhere near what schools in Toronto have need the Science Centre to develop their science program. So we need to reach not only Toronto but all of Ontario and we need to bring on board all the educators, all the parents, all the children in order to fight for our Science Centre. Thank you. Thank you. This gentleman had his hand up. This gentleman had his hand up. He wants to say something. So we're running out of time. One minute, please. Okay. Well, very quickly, I have an alternative idea for Ontario Place. Keep the original one, open a branch of the Ontario Science Centre at Ontario Place, and make it possible to educate the public about the Green Belt, because the Oak Ridges Moraine is a natural aquifer that spills directly into Lake Ontario right at that site. So it would be uh, an educational experience at the same time as having the branch and the original building intact. And I would also say, 
His name no longer, to me, is Doug Ford. It's Thug Ford. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. But I will tell you something, and you know what? I don't think we can have too many uh, science experiences, but until we properly fund the building that we have now, the facility that we have now, um, it's really impractical to open up uh, other ones. I'd like to see one in all parts of the city. I'd like to see a water theme, one at Ontario Place, but until we can actually fund, the government uh, uh, says they're going to fund the one we have, it's very impractical. So, um, lady Hi. over here. Hi, Floyd. Thanks for, work, for what you're doing today. You asked me why am I here? Well, in case you haven't noticed, we're in a heat wave, a really bad heat wave. There is no place to get in the lake. The public pools are overcrowded and, uh, and, and polluted. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's criminal. We can't swim in the lake. There's no place to get in. They've closed our beach at Ontario Place. There's no place to, the public parks, downtown public parks like Bellwoods, are overcrowded. They're at capacity. It's so cruel what's going on. That's why I'm here. Because these things are all related. The Science Center, Ontario Place, and all of the other institutions that have been uh, mentioned today. Woo! Thank you. Powerful. Powerful. Swimming Lake Ontario at the cleanest beach that's now closed. Shame! 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 I currently live very close to Science Center. I have an 11 year old son. I'm sorry, I can't say this without crying. I've cried many hours this weekend. It's heartbreaking to me that they are destroying this building. It's architecture, it's history, world history, not just Toronto. They're taking it away from a neighborhood that desperately needs it. But I also grew up in the 905, so I have another perspective. Anyone who lives north of the 401 and east of the city, especially all those school children. I came to that Ontario Science Center every year as a kid in public school, every single year. It will be an hour less time those children get at the new Science Center at Ontario Place. If they even get to go, if it's worth going at all. Traffic's never gonna get better. It is only gonna get worse. It doesn't need to be downtown. For me, parking, that'll be even more horrible. It's convenient where it is for many GTA people. It's horrible what he's doing. It needs to be saved. It's architectural history. There's so many aspects of it. It needs to be saved where it is. And I don't know why he put that fence up. I took my son there at 5.30 on Friday night. As soon as I heard, he went through that blue tube one last time before it got fenced off. We literally were there for an hour. I couldn't leave. It's heartbreaking. I thought I was passionate. I thought I was passionate. You know, you know, one thing that uh, Minister, Minister King Sermon had said early in this was that nobody goes there. Well, people go there. We, you know, we went out there, we took photographs of the school buses in the parking lot. Well, parking lot full of yellow school buses. We were there on Friday. There were still kids coming and going, families coming and going. People go there. It's inaccessible. Well, it's sitting right on the arterial road, Don Mills Road. Uh, if you drive a car, it's 12 minutes south of the, of the 401. It's five minutes west of, of the Don Valley Parkway. If you're a transit user like me, the 25 and 925 bus go past there. The Eglinton bus goes past there. And when my grandchildren grow up, they'll be able to take the Eglinton Crosstown uh, there. But in addition to that, my great, great, great grandchildren will be able to hop on the Ontario line downtown and get dropped off right in front. God bless my great, great, great grandchildren for being able to be the first riders on the $30 billion, $30 billion Ontario line. This gentleman is asked to speak. He's been said he's going to be brief. Hi, my name is David DePoe. I represent the 11,000 members of the Elementary Teachers of Toronto. And every single one of us values the presence and our experience at the Toronto, uh, at the Ontario Science Centre. 
where it is right now is accessible to many schools in and out of this city because it's close to transportation roads, close to the DBV and so on. I've taken hundreds of children personally to the Science Centre from my classrooms over 32 years of teaching and all of us believe that this Science Centre should be refurbished, rebuilt, re renewed, modernized and stay in its place to educate students from all over Ontario. Hands up if you've ever been there. Right on, exactly. And I've been there dozens and dozens of times with children. And so this is so important to us. And this is all part of this private, giant spa. Instead of spending money on the on a public, uh, absolutely necessary institution for all of us in Ontario, they're spending money building a garage underneath a giant spa down there and taking away public land. It's all about this whole privatization thing uh, that this government is doing. So I say, all of us, to all of us, let's save our science center. So that's, that's the comment over and over and over again. GTA school boards make up 25% of, of attendance at the Ontario Science Centre. 25%. I'm not talking about Toronto school boards. This is all school boards. One of the things that the Ontario Auditor General pointed out was that not only did the, uh, the province consult with the City of Toronto, our mayor, our mayor or city council, but never consulted with the community of Flemington, Thorncliffe, Don Mills, or Lee Side. And they didn't consult or ask what they thought about to any of the GTA school boards. But they make up 25% of the attendance. And this gentleman said it so eloquently, 32 years of bringing kids to the science center to get a better education. Right over here. Scarborough kids need the science center. I'm from Scarborough. I grew up loving the science center. Me and all my friends from Scarborough went to the science center for our classes for fun. We need the source of education for an already racialized and minority dense community. We're already underfunded. We need the science center to educate our young, to educate our youth. I want to let down this next generation like the other generations before we have let down me. Wow. Anybody else? We want to hear from the crowd. We want to hear, you want, we want to hear from you guys. So, I have, anybody? I have up, a, we'll get to you. I have okay. a very We're still on time. I have a quick story. I'm coming home from, from being abroad and I'm on the UP bus, a uh, thing from Pearson Airport, one seat left. I invite this scruffy middle-aged man to sit beside me. I start talking to him. He used to come to Toronto every summer with his family from Detroit. He talks about the most favorite thing he would do, which was go to the Science Center. Why, why was this man in Toronto? He's a Harvard medical doctor, educated man, and he was here for a conference because his specialty is um, treating children with extremely rare blood disorders. And he said when he was seven years old, and he looked through that microscope at the Science Center, the world exploded for him. It was so powerful. And we need to take our message beyond Toronto. I know everyone in Toronto loves the Science Center, but we have to get every single person involved, even beyond Ontario. Thank you. Very well said, thank you. I'll uh, come to you next. I just wanted to point out that if they go ahead with this stupid plan to change, uh, close the Science Center, it's the loss of another IMAX screen. It's a dome screen. It's a Canadian invention. The first one was at Ontario Place. Uh, there, I yeah, exactly. Wait. Cinesphere, I believe there's another Om it's Omnimax, uh, Omnimax theater, I think, at the Museum of uh, History, or whatever they call it now in Ottawa. But um, I just want to point that out that the IMAX screen was a later edition, uh, and it's it's an it's dome, and if they close the Science Center, we lose that as well. Thank you. You know, one of the things that we're, we uncovered is that, did anybody here know that the Montreal Science Center is 
not run by the city of Montreal or the uh, province of Quebec. The federal government runs the Montreal, Montreal Science Center. It's Canada lands, just like our uh, Downview Park, or Park Downview Park, and uh, uh, the CN Tower. So we're exploring ways to get maybe funding or the federal government to recognize that the Ontario Science Center uh, is an asset to all of Canada. Some of our posters say, made in Canada. What better way? Save Ontario Science Center is going to be to celebrate Canada Day uh, at Mark Cardone School in Don Valley West. Uh, we'll be there with the representatives there, and the next one will be sometime in the middle of July uh, in, the Flem in Flemington Park. Just to go back there. We've been there, we're going back. And then we're going to go, you know what? Let's go to Doug Ford, see, Doug Ford Senior Park in Etobicoke and show Doug Ford that Daddy says, Dougie, leave the Science Center alone. <laughs> Anybody else like to say something? Um, my name is Amr. I am 13 years old. Uh, I live in East York, and science is something that I'm very passionate about, and it's been a big part of my childhood. Um, and I've been going to the Science Center for a very long time, since my early childhood, and I still have gone to it recently, and I would hate to see it destroyed and replaced somewhere else. The Science Center is a major part of my life recently, as well as right now, and despite the next generation not being particularly political, I'm sure that there are a lot of people that still express support for the Science Center. Okay, um, there's one thing I wanted to point out. I looked it up this morning. The new Science Center, if it ever comes, is not scheduled to open until 2028. That's right. It's 2024 right now. That means our young friend and thousands and thousands of children who are in grade nine right now won't be graduating with an opportunity to visit the Ontario Science Center. Those, those kinds of special opportunities are rare and far between. And, those, and, and missing those for four hours for four years is like going back to COVID, and I don't think any of us want to go back to those kinds of opportunities where you don't have out of the out of the home special opportunities to experience science and explore your own curiosity. So, just wanted to remind everybody of that point. One more. Okay. Oh, you got time. Yeah, yeah. Two more. And this young gent, you know what, sir? You can wrap it up for us, and then. Well, uh, you know what, because they're the, one, they're the ones that are going to be there. So you're going to be our final and most powerful speaker. Thank you so much. So my name is Rachel Churnis Lynn, and I'm the trustee for Don Valley West. I also... Uh, the Science Center is right on the border. It's technically in Don Valley East, but those of us in Don Valley West, we think of it as our own. Uh, as well. I mean, it's all of Toronto's, but it, it certainly feels like it's very much part of our neighborhood. I grew up taking my kids there, and um, I'm also service chair of the Toronto District School Board. And I have to tell you that the fact of where it is, it is near one of the largest underserved areas in the city of Toronto in terms of being right at, at, right at the doorstep of Pamphlet Park and Flemington Park. And, and absolutely. And so you can only imagine the devastation of the, that uh, announcement on Friday, yesterday. Because so many of our kids walk there. Our kids are bused there from all over of the city of Toronto for field trips. Uh, but we have a lot of kids who also are able to walk there and who will no longer be able to do that. And those are not communities that can afford to get there. It also serves as a tremendous place of employment and internships and things like and camps and all of those pieces for the communities around it. So um, I just want to thank everybody from coming out here for coming out here today because this is a gem in that neighborhood. And just like our, our public schools, we need to be investing in the maintenance of our infrastructure and that includes things like the Science Center, like our schools, like all of our public buildings. Uh, 
uh, the way we treat all our essential infrastructure, these should not be left to decay without proper investment and proper care. That's what government funds and that's what taxpayer dollars should be used for, right? So, anyways, I just want to thank you, Norm. Norm was uh, a school council chair for years. Uh, different board, but an ally and the same, and I know you care about the kind of things that are so important in terms of education, and the Science Center is one of those things. So I know next you're going to hear from someone really special, and, and these are, this is, you know, it's, it's about the kids, it, and if it's, when it's about the kids, it's about the future. So um, I will hand it off to the next generation. Stand up. Say your name, please. Uh, I'm Malcolm. Nice I'm, to meet you, Malcolm. I'm Ken, and I go to Santa. I go every year, every single year I go. And what's next? He's going to take away the ROM. He's going to take away the AGO. He's going to take away. He's going to take away the subway if he can get his head around it. Like, I saw a sign earlier. It said, "Without science, there'd be no beer." Just think about that, okay? Think about that. That's all. Wow, pretty good. We're going to wrap it up now. So save, save Ontario Science Center. But I want some noise first, please. Come on. Encourage your family, encourage your friends, encourage your neighbors to go to SaveScienceCenter.com. Send a letter to Doug Ford. Send a letter to Minister King of Surma. All of them. City Council, Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Chow. Every city, if you live in Toronto, your city council will get it. Uh, we just uh, updated it so your M MP will get it as long as, as your MP. We're allowed positive voice for and to support the Science Center. We're allowed positive voice to support a open Ontario place. Ontario place for all. Support Ontario place for all. Support Save OSC. Now we're going to have a little bit of fun because Jim Martin here, who's out here, who does all this phenomenal set up and work and all this stuff wants us to party like it's a rock and roll show. So, Jim!